Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace of Allah, His blessing and mercy be upon us all. Amin. Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to a topic that we want to share with you. That is, how do we save our iman? Now, being Muslim, we have been informed by Allah and His last messenger, Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam to save our soul and our family from the fire of hell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remind us in surah al-tahrim Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu ku anfusakum wa ahlikum nara O you who believe save your soul and the soul of your families from the fire of hell. Now what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us that whoever don't have iman, then he is sure to go to hell. Now when you have your iman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do not want you to leave you with your iman without really understand what is iman? And that's why Allah said, Ya ayuhalazina amanu. O you who believe. He is talking to those who have iman. Qu anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. Save your soul. Save your iman. Now how do you save your iman? To save our iman, we must make sure that we do not commit any form of shirk whether it's major or it's minor because Allah have warned us innahu man yushrik billah faqad harram Allah alayhi al-jannah wa ma'wahu al-nar wa ma'li al-zalimina min ansar Allah said whoever commit shirk and die in shirk, meaning die in associating partners with Allah, not with the right tawheed, not with the right aqidah and belief. Then Allah said, I forbid him or her entering paradise. And there will not be any helper for them in the hereafter. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also remind us like what the Prophet have said, La tatkulul jannah hatta tu'minu. None of us can enter paradise without iman. This is the most valuable deeds in every one of us. The only thing that can save us from hellfire, that is iman. So we should Make sure that the Iman that we have is genuine through the Iman that Allah wants us to have. The Iman that the Prophet Muhammad have taught his companion and the companion to the Tabi'in, Tabi'in to the Tabi', Tabi'in until today. Now we do believe in Allah. We do believe in Prophet Muhammad وسلم, as the last messenger of Allah. But there are times there are Muslims who started to feel that there is another Prophet after Prophet Muhammad. Whoever believed that there is another Prophet after Prophet Muhammad وسلم, then his Iman is no more valid. Anything to do with Iman, they are conditioned that you must fulfill. If you do not fulfill the condition, then your Iman will not be valid. And that's why Iman is based on Kalimah Tain wa Shahida Tain Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah wa Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah Meaning anybody who claim that he is a believer, the least that he must do is to declare that there is none worthy to be worshipped except Allah alone. That is number one. 
Now, it's not sufficient for him to say, yeah, I believe in God. It is not sufficient to say, oh, I believe in one God. There is Allah. Not anybody can say, I believe in one God. Anybody can say, I believe in Allah. Even shaitan said, he believes in Allah. There's no difference between his believing in Allah and our believing in Allah in the matter of saying our word. But before you want to say that you believe in one God, Allah, Allah made a condition that you must negate. You must deny other God, other kind of belief. Whatever belief that you have earlier, whether you believe in yourself, whether you believe in money, in stone, in angel, in star, in moon, in sun, or anything, you must reject all these other beliefs. And then after denying, after getting all the other beliefs away, yeah, out from your heart and your mind, then it's but then you must affirm that the only God that you believe is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and nothing else. There must be a negation and then affirm. You confirm the one that I really believe is only Allah, nothing more. Then your belief towards Allah is true, is good, is safe, is authentic. And then after you say, I believe in Allah, but you don't believe in Prophet Muhammad then your Iman is not valid because Allah put condition that you must believe in Him first and after Allah immediately you must believe in His Messenger Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam but there are people today who say yes I have no problem to believe that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah but I think he is not the last one then your iman is not valid. Oh, I believe in Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, but I don't think it's necessary for me to follow his teaching. You are out. Because when you say you believe, that means you must follow what you believe in. Whatever the Prophet wants you to do, you must try your level best to do it. Whatever the Prophet forbid you, you must stay. If you do not do, if you kufur bin Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then your Iman also is not valid. This is the important thing that all Muslim must understand. Believing in Allah to make it more simple. Believing in Allah is not just believing that Allah exists, but you must also believe in whatever Allah said in His holy book, Al-Quran Al-Kareem, in the book of Allah. There is the Quran. There has been a guidance for all of us since it was revealed to Prophet Muhammad وسلم, until today and until the doom day. Brothers and sisters, now it is very important for us who have been feeling that we are believers, who have been claiming that we are believers, to really understand yeah, the right of Allah upon us and our right upon Him. So our right towards Allah is Allah would not want to punish us. But Allah's right upon us is we should only worship Him alone and do not commit any form of shirk. Now we are going to look slowly into our daily life, whether our Iman, our belief, is free from shirk or not. Now look what the Prophet Sallallahu have to tell us. Number one, the Prophet Sallallahu said, Man laqi Allah yushiriku bihi shay'an daqla nar In Hadith Sahih Muslim, the Prophet said, whoever met Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that means whoever die, and you are going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you commit shirk that means you believe in other than Allah you love other than Allah you worship others than Allah you ask spiritual help others than Allah you commit shirk and the Prophet said 
you are going to hell. And this is important. I mean, a person who said, I believe in Allah, means you must believe that anything to do with the spiritual thing, you are not going to ask any help from anyone except directly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. This is important. We have been reciting this ayah almost every day in our prayer. That means at least 17 times per day if you are just performing the obligatory prayer. But until today, a lot of us still are not sure of what we have been telling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. Meaning, only you, O oh Allah, we worship and only to you we seek help concerning about the ghaib. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen our iman and free us from all shirk. We will see you back after a short break. I'm among all the prophets, Muhammad. I'm among all the prophets, Muhammad was the last. Alhamdulillah, all praise due to Allah. Welcome back to our program, brothers and sisters. Now we have been discussing about the importance of really understand whether we have the right iman, whether our iman is free from shirk. And I have shared with you some example. I will just got to continue. Inshallah, we hope Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help us to understand his deen and free us from all type of shirk. Now when you talk about shirk again, the Prophet Sallallahu did remind us, Man halafa bi ghayrillah faqad ashraqa rawahu ahmad. Now the Prophet said, whoever swears other than Allah's name, that means if you, I swear with the son, I swear with the name of my father, with the name of my mother, with the name of so and so. Whoever swears other than with the name of Allah, that means he commits shirk. So a Muslim must be very careful when he wants to say something. When you say something, sometimes you want to convince others so that they believe what you say. So you start to swear with this, swear with that. Then swearing with the name of other than Allah will make you commit a shirk. And if you die while doing that, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to forgive you. But if you die, do not commit shirk. You may commit other sins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is prepared to forgive all other sins except shirk. So it's important for us to take this matter seriously. Because shirk is not a thing for you to play around. It's not a minor thing. I don't think this is a big matter. It's a small issue. No, this is a very important thing. That's why all prophets were sent for the same reason. Meaning, to free human from committing shirk. And to worship Allah alone. To have the right iman and to save their souls and to save the souls of their family. We all believe that you know, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us, He, Allah, created us for a very noble purpose and reason. is to know Him, to love Him, and to worship Him. What do you mean by worship Him? To obey His command. Whatever He wants you to do is for your own goods. Whatever he forbid is also for your own goods. Allah will never want us to do something that do not bring benefit to us or that will bring harm to us. And Allah will not want us to do anything that is a waste of time. Whatever he wants you to do, brothers and sisters, is the best for you. Because he is the creator, the all-knowing, the all-seeing, the all-hearing, the all-powerful. He knows what is best for all of us. If we just learn how to follow 
Allah's command, inshallah, your life, our life all will be blessed here and will be blessed in the hereafter. And that's why Prophet Muhammad spent almost 13 solid years focusing on this knowledge, the knowledge of Tawheed, the importance of having the right belief, the right Iman. And after having the right Iman, the Prophet want us to save our Iman, do not just let it go before our Iman will be tested. Sometimes you believe in Allah. Sometimes while believing in Allah, you believe in other things too. Somebody said, oh, I think this number bring luck to me. This stone bring some blessing to me. How can you believe in all these things? There is no stone that bring bless to anybody, bring any blessing to anyone, no. Until if there is an evidence from Allah or the saying of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that this stone have some special blessing, then we can believe. But so far, we don't have any hadith from the Prophet that the Prophet did mention about ruby, about jade, about any other stone or diamond or even gold or silver, nothing. All this is ornament, is zinatul dunya. Nothing more than that. Think that you can make use of it, but you cannot believe that there is blessing from all these things. Sometimes we just cannot imagine what is happening to the people today. So-called professional people, so-called intelligent people, but still, how professional they are, they are people who are so attached with numbers. No, there are people until today, they are phobia with number 13 in the West. If there is a leaf, if the leaf they have 9, 10, 11, 12, and then 12 plus, or they jump to 14. They do not want this number 13, because they say, this number brings bad luck to us. It's an unlucky number. How can a number be unlucky? How can a number bring harm to you or to me? Only people who don't have the right Iman have all this kind of belief that do not save them from the punishment of Allah. Because Allah do not want you to believe in all this nonsense. For the Chinese community, they believe in number four is bad to them. Number eight is good number. It's like good luck. Yeah? They say, but means good luck. They don't like number four. Four means dead. They don't like number nine. Four, even how successful the Chinese are today, but they are weak in their iman. They still fear certain number. But alhamdulillah, we Muslim who believe in Allah have no problem about any number. Why? Because we know everything belongs to Allah. If Allah said, be, then it's be. But there's no saying in the Quran or the saying of the Prophet, there is a bad number. Unlucky number, no. So we believe all number is the same. You know that some people who want to get married, sometimes they are so worried about the month. And they look in the birthday of this girl and the birthday of this boy to see whether it clash or not. What is happening to this ummah? How can we claim that we have the right iman and we still believe with the same belief of other people? There is something that we must make sure that we are free from that, insha'Allah. Yeah? So we must get ourselves free from numbering. Yeah, also, there are people who believe that if I want to travel, they will come out from their house in the time of the Prophet, the Prophet did mention about that, they will hold to a bird. They will free the bird. They let go the bird that is with them. Now, if the bird will fly straight onward, then they will start their journey by going straight. If the bird will fly to the right, then they will start the journey from the right. If the bird will go to the left, then they will start their journey to the left. Now you see how weak the human is today? They let the bird to guide them where to go, whether to the front, right or left. 
why must we let animals to decide which road for us to take? It never makes sense at all. You know, if you want to go to this place, this is the fastest road, you just go. Why must you use a bird to tell you which road to take? This is all a form of sharing. And the Prophet reminds us again, Man allaka tamimatan faqad ashraq. Rawahu Ahmad. Whoever tie anything on their hand, their stomach, their waist, or their wrist, or any place, some black string, yellow string, or red string, or any color, with the belief that this string will protect them from certain harm, from evil eyes. Now, the Prophet said, Man allakata me matan fakat ashrak. Whoever ties any amulet, any string, and believe that this string will protect them from the bad spirit, from the evil eyes, because we believe they are bad spirit. We believe they are sahar. We believe they are black magic. We believe evil eye because the Prophet talk about it. But the Prophet and Allah do not want us to depend on a black string or yellow string or azima. The Prophet want us to rely and depend on Allah wahda. La sharika lak. Allah alone. And do not associate any partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't ever believe that this string will protect your children. If they start to cry, you thought that maybe there's some disturbance yeah? or some bad spirit is coming to disturb my child. So to protect my child, you start to use a black string and tie over his belly. No, you don't believe in that. Even they say, oh, this is some, there's some imam or some alim or some spiritual Muslim brothers, they recommend it. And they say they write the word of Allah and then they wrap it up and then they tie it with a string. Whatever they say, whatever they say, don't ever follow, don't ever believe. Because if this thing exists, the Prophet should have recommend his ummah, his companion to do it. But in the history of Islam, none of the Prophet's companion did do such kind of act. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save our iman by freeing us from all shirik. Amin. Ya Rabbul Alamin. Wa billahi tawfiqi. Wal akhri da'wana. Walhamdulillahi Rabbul Alamin. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.